This is First United Methodist Church in Boone. Let's worship. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house, where the disciples had met, were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Jesus showed up. He showed them his scars. And then he sent out the disciples, transformed. Show up. Years ago, I heard a woman talk who had been a chaplain at a hospital in Newark, New Jersey. She was often in the emergency room. She saw many, many horrendous sights. It was difficult. There's times all she wanted to do was just run, was to get out. And she said those were exactly the times when I most needed to stay, to stay with those 
who are afraid, who were terrified, or those who just were incapacitated and couldn't do anything themselves. She said, I have a ministry of shoes. I keep my shoes in the room and I keep my feet in my shoes. Because you can't help anybody if you're not there. And often just being there is the most and the best that you can do. Now, there are times for consistent and reasoned arguments. There's cogent cases to be made, words that can be said. But some questions, some situations, are best answered by actions. If someone's a someone asks, do you love me? Or are you ready? Or, hey, do you think you're old enough? They ask, do you even care? Or, are you really sorry? Where are we going to go from here? Where is God? You can answer with words, but it better be followed up by actions. Answers are crying, laughter, baking cookies, driving all night, bringing a casserole, staying by a bedside for days and weeks to stop fighting, to put up a fight, to pray together wordlessly. Often, the answer to the deep questions of life doesn't require the right words. Rather, it just needs the right touch. Thomas didn't want well-reasoned arguments and wishes. He wanted Jesus. Other people want that of us, too. They want the real thing. And they can spot a fake. Jesus showed Thomas and the disciples his scars. Thomas, Thomas is known was the first as doubter. The doubter. Someone who doubts or is skeptical is looking for evidence. He's someone who hasn't given up like a, a cynic or a nihilist. He believes that there or she believes that there is something true, something real. But you know what can really mess you up is is certainty. Paul Tillich used to say that doubt is not the opposite of faith. Certainty is the opposite of faith. You don't need faith if you're just certain. See, if you're, if you're certain, you don't take a, a map or a GPS. Uh, you know exactly where you're going until, until you don't. If you're certain, then you will trust the wrong person or, or you won't give the new person a chance. Certainty will ignore the evidence. Certainty won't change its mind when it's proven wrong or when new experiences come up. No, doubt is being willing to follow the evidence. If doubt is open to experience and revelation, then doubt will find the truth. Show your scars. Show that you have been healed. You've been wounded, you're authentic, but you've been transformed. 10 or 11 years ago, there was a nine-year-old boy in our church who was badly burned over 70 percent of his body. So difficult. First, worrying if he would survive the initial trauma, and then if he could uh, avoid having the infections that are so dangerous, and then all of the pain that he went through with the skin grafts. His mother also talked about her worries about his future. Would he hate how he looked, how his body looked? How would he be different? It was at that time that I, I wrote a poem called, I Love My Scars, very much with this young man in mind. Here it is. I love my scars. I love my scars for they tell my story. They tell of one who has lived with pain, who has marks of strength and streaks of glory, who God has saved again and again. I love my scars because they are no longer wounds. I've been through hell, but I've lived to tell how I conquered and survived, or simply outgrew it. How God brought me to the place and then brought me through it. I love my scars because Jesus has them too. The disciples were hiding behind locked doors when Jesus appears. Then they believe when they see his scars, and then he heals their hurt 
and calms their fears. Tell me, who doesn't have scars? Ghosts and young infants and others who have never lived? People who never knew pain and just how it feels? I love my scars and I love Jesus who transforms and heals. Jesus gave the disciples the Holy Spirit and then he sent them out transformed. There's a preacher in a little southern town several years ago named Clint Tidwell. And it was the day after Easter Sunday. It was a Monday morning. You see, Clint had a church member who was the publisher, editor, a writer of the local newspaper. And he, uh, he was on in years and others had taken over a lot of what he had done. But he made sure to always have a summary of the sermon of the minister at the Methodist Church every Monday morning. Well, that Monday morning, the day after Easter, Clint Tidwell padded in his uh, slippers out onto the driveway and he saw the newspaper from several paces away and there was a headline on it that was the size of a World War III announcement. And it said, Tidwell claims Jesus raised from the dead. Well, <laughs> it seems rather astonishing when you say it like that. But maybe that's, maybe that is the best response, that this is an incredible claim. Why would they claim such a thing? How could they just decide that that was true? What transformed them from those who were hiding there in the upper room, those who had consistently not gotten it when Jesus was telling the stories, those who he called hard-headed, those who had betrayed him? And yet here they went out from that room believing, telling the story. Each of them died, except tradition says Thomas. Each of them died for their faith, martyred. No, oh, something happened to transform them in that room. And that's what Thomas blurted out, my Lord and my God, when Jesus was revealed to him. The church is evidence of the resurrection. Christians are to be signs of the transforming power of God. Jesus sent the disciples out transformed. And our transformation continues to be evidence of the resurrection. And so we tell the story of the resurrection. We tell it through our lives. To tell the story of healing is also to tell the story of pain. To tell the story of knowledge gained is also to tell the story of what we've gone through to learn. To tell the story of faith is to recount the doubt that you have dealt with. The story of victory is also a story of failures, of sacrifice, and of undeserved grace. We may tell these stories in words, but we are also likely to blurt them out in our actions, to state them clearly in our presence, and to preach them consistently in our priorities. This church of people transformed is the evidence of God's action in the world. This church of people transformed is the body of the risen Christ. Amen.
O Holy God, be with us this day. Help us to be with others. Heal us and send us for your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.